Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up with Haley, where we rise, shine, and live aligned. I am Haley Garcia. I host this show interviewing different community leaders in the Woodlands, Texas, and also some of my dear friends. And this morning, I am so excited to have on with me Miss Deborah Myers. Uh, she is a fearless female business leader and a very dear friend of mine. Um, I'm going to read a quick little intro for her because she has so many amazing things. I don't want to miss any. Deborah is a mission-driven entrepreneur. She's a licensed cosmetologist and medical esthetician and struggled for years with eczema. Back in 2008, Deborah partnered with an herbalist and chemist to give her business idea stability and integrity, and eventually Infusia was born, which is now a national company in thousands of stores, including some of our major brands like Whole Foods and HEB here locally that we all know. So uh, I want to welcome this innovative, persevering businesswoman, my dear friend, Deborah Myers. Thank you so much for being with us on the show this morning. Of course. Good morning. Thank Good you so morning. much for having me. I know that it is bright and early and your time is so precious. So I'm really grateful that you're here with us this morning, Deborah. Um, outside of the quick, uh, the quick little intro that I shared with everyone, please give us just some highlights for your career success before we jump into our conversation today. You know, I, from about the time I was eight years old, that was when I did my first haircut. It wasn't bad, by the way. Um, I always wanted to be in the beauty business. And so when I was in high school, I went to cosmetology school at the same time. And uh, I got my license when I was 18. And I just always wanted to be in the business. I wanted to go to New York. I wanted to work for big cosmetic companies. Until I did, I worked for Chanel. I worked for Arden. I worked for Calvin Klein. Mm -hmm. I've worked for a lot of major big companies, but the one thing I learned very quickly is um, the beauty business is very ugly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a margin money driven business. It's not a make you feel good business. Mm -hmm. It has changed quite a bit, maybe in the last five years more so than any, and then definitely with the pandemic. But I will tell you, it's really, you know, when I was trained by Chanel, everyone is trained to sell Coco uh, Chanel Red lipstick. Right. right. And it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't look good on you, you're going to sell it. And I think I just kind of had a, a, a kind of this vision in my head of what I thought beauty would be versus what it was. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's big corporate. You know, I, I went to college and I, I got my business degree and I learned all about just business itself. Yes. And then when you realize that your maybe your personal goals and your personal who you are doesn't align with the corporate world, you know, that's when there's that rub. Yes. And uh, so I actually left, I left the business for a long time and I went into packaging, uh, selling to cosmetic companies. And I really loved that. Um, but again, it became this kind of this corporate grind to traveling a hundred thousand miles a year and, and really being paid well, probably for not doing enough work because, you know, when you're good at what you do and when you like what you do, it has this tendency to become easier, Right. not easy, but easier. Sure. So um, I just decided that I had to kind of reassess my life. And, you know, when I looked at someone because they were a commission check, I, for me, I, I had to change that. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually took a very big national job with a global company. And I, ref I said, I do not want to get paid commission. I said, I want you to pay me well, and I'm fine. And I was the only sales rep they ever had that wasn't paid on commission. But I had probably the top 10% of all the business in the company. So it just, you know, when you do something that's from your heart, you're going to do it well. And yes. um, not saying that commission sales isn't great. Uh, believe me, I, I uh, there are many days when I, I miss some of that. But it, for, for me personally, I just wanted to see you, Haley. I didn't want to see, oh, how much money can I make off Haley today? <laughs> you know? And it's a, it's a totally different thing. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a completely different thing. And I think that's one of the things that I love most about you is your heart and your spirit that is so authentic. And you really have built your company based on that foundation. Um, and I, I have a quote from you that uh, I jotted down and I'm going to share it with everyone. Deborah said, Life is super hard, but I find if you take just a moment or two each day to look out the window and see nature in its beauty, your heart and spirits will be lifted. 
And when I look at your company that you've built, Deborah, you have built it based on that foundation. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really admirable, especially from one female business owner to another. Um, so many of us can lose sight of what actually matters in our lives and, and to our teams and to all the people that we touch when we get just into the business mindset and it's how much money are we going to make and how many of whatever it is we're selling, are we going to sell? Right. Mm -hmm. And you have created Infusia that are, I, I know it, it, it originally, you know, really became well known, at least from my perspective, because of these beautiful handmade bath bombs that that everyone loves, right? You can never yes. have too many bath bombs that never. smell <laughs> your entire home with this amazing aroma, whatever flavor that might be. But you really have built it and you have products that serve so many people. So I'm really excited about our conversation today. I want you to share so much with our listeners because you you are the epitome of perseverance with heart, in my opinion. So I'm Thank super you. excited. Um, before we get started, you might know on my show, I really like to kick it off with tell me something good. Um, so would you share with us just something good or something you feel some gratitude around this morning in your, in your business or your personal life? Well, I have two things. One is more personal and, it, and anyone who lives in Texas understands this. We've had this crazy drought going on. So the fact that I haven't had to water my yard in about six days has been like, ah, um, because we had this stuff coming out of the sky called rain. Yeah. So I'm um, super excited about that. Uh, I'm, but I'm actually excited about uh, for all of Texas because we've kind of got this storm coming in and, and giving us rain and, and we need it. Um, and then on the business side, you know, we, we, yesterday we got a really nice order from a customer, which happens a lot, but the difference was this time we had almost everything that the customer needed. So we were able to, we're able to turn it around very quickly. And that means that all the plans we put in place are working. <laughs> so great. that, I mean, cause a lot of times, you know, uh, the, the best laid plans uh, of mice and men, the mice win. Yes. Um, and that's just the way it goes. So I, I, I'm so thankful that we had a plan that was executed um, and is working. So yes. that's a hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Those are two great things. And I second the rain. Uh, <laughs> normally, when I when I walk my dogs and we go through the mud puddles, I get right. a bit frustrated because I have to come home and wash their feet and do all the things. And last night I was like, you know what, guys, it's OK. You just run in the mud. Puddles you run. Exactly. Dogs. You run. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, and, and I, you know, it's, it's interesting. Our, our economy and our markets, as we know, are all a little shifting right now, no matter what industry we're in, uh, things are changing in the world. And uh, I too am really grateful for, you know, on the real estate business, I employ a lot of people that take care of their families. And when yes. the market shifts as it has, you know, it's, it's been really good for a couple of years through COVID. And so we all had a couple of really strong years, but mm -hmm. it is very quickly pivoted. And yes. I'm, I'm really grateful for the team that I have. And also our, um, you said something to me the other day, and I'm going to share it because I was so grateful for it when you shared it with me. And you said, um, what is our winning strategy? And the winning strategy is what's important now. And it really made me reflect on my team in the real estate industry of we have such an ability to pivot and to focus on what's important now. And right now it's really caring for our clients as they make big decisions because buying or selling a house is obviously one of the big decisions we make in, sure. in life. And uh, I just have such a great team that has the ability to do that and really focus on what's important now. And so you, you shared that with me the other day and it really stuck with me. So thank you. I'm grateful for that. Well, I can't take credit for it. I heard a pastor speaking and, and he kind of had this mentality. He said, you know, you can get really down in the dumps about a plethora of, of items, really, whether it's personal, financial, uh, business, your cat is sick. You know, there's a million things that come at us on a daily basis, um, but you do have to focus on what's important now. And when he said that, I was like, you know what, that is just so good. And it's so easy because it does, what's important now is winning, right? Yeah. Um, and winning looks different day by day. Uh, uh, sometimes yeah. it's hour by hour. Yes. Um, you know, so I think that that is so important is it, making sure that you stay focused on what's important now, because depending on what's going on in your life, what's important now is not in your office building. 
Correct. It could be at home. It could be uh, you're at the mechanic. You're, there's like a million places that what's important now hap- you happen to go to. So I just love that that saying and that it kind of keeps it real, you know? One hundred percent. And it also, I think it, it reminded me that um, it's okay to give ourselves permission to change what's important now. Are you kidding? Yes. I'm, in fact, if you if you don't allow yourself to to constantly change, yes. you'll find yourself uh, waking up one day um, not needed. Yes. And what I mean by that is, you know, whether, so in your case, you have a real estate team and, and everyone on your team is amazing. I know them all. And, you know, when, if they don't stay current and they don't take the time to learn or get out for coffee with other key people in the community, they're not going to be able to offer the insights and advice to people that they're looking, that are looking for that. Right. And then your phone won't ring. So Correct. for me, you know, it's it's about okay, what products are are people wanting? And sometimes I want to discontinue things, and people are like, "No, that's my favorite thing," uh, you know, yes. and and that's that kind of stuff. So you have to constantly be thinking about change and embrace change. Yes, I am a a rainmaker. I love change. It drives my uh, team crazy because I also the the opposite of that is um, stagnation. I I feel. Yes. And when you're stagnant, you know, we all know what happens with stagnant water. Um, you know, here come the mosquitoes or here come the bugs. And it's like, I don't want that for myself as a person or for my company or for my team or for anybody. Right. So I think that's important. It's so important. And I, I think that mentality is such a testament to what you have built, right? Because you really live and breathe that mentality and that mindset on a daily basis from from how I know you as a friend and a business owner. Um, tell us just a little bit on a high level, how did you get to where you are? What do you attribute your success to? I, I know that um, it's probably not been fields of flowers every day. <laughs> I sure wish it was. Um, I think what's really driven me to where I am is, uh, I mean, I people who know me know this. I grew up very, very poor. My dad did not graduate high school. My mom told me for years she did, and I recently found her high school diploma, so it's true, but always worked very, you know, just day-to-day, hour-to-hour jobs. But the one thing they taught me was hard work. You know what? Just showing up most of the time will get you noticed. It will get you promoted. It will um, it'll help keep you moving forward. Yeah. And that is the one thing I think that the last generation was so good at. My mom would go to work, you know, five in the morning, six in the morning, every day, never called out sick. Um and was one of those people that didn't even think about asking for a vacation. So when you grow up with that, you think that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. And I have found that just by showing up regularly and being, you know, it's not right place, right time, because it's it's all your time. But right. it's being there, which happens to be the right place, and then you're noticed, or you have a conversation with someone on the elevator, and next thing you know, your VP of sales, Um, you know, whatever it happens to be. But for Infusia, you know, I had this crazy thought of, well, I'm going to make a product and everyone's going to love it and buy it. And I'm going to be a Neiman Marcus because that was the life I knew. I, all of my brands sold at Neiman Marcus and Saks and Nordstrom and all the great stores. Right. Um, But, you know, that wasn't the reality. I went to craft shows and the Panther Creek show. And, you know, there was, I did one year did 36 little craft fairs and 52 weekends. Wow. So wow. You, when you think about the time that takes, plus I had my full-time job. So, you know, you think about the time it takes, you're slepping, you're lugging, you're selling, you're packing up, you're going home. It became so clear to me. It's like, I cannot do this. I have to think way bigger than this. Yes. And then I changed my whole mindset. And that is, who am I going to sell to? How am I going to do it? And, you know, who, who can help me do it? Yes. And, you know, the interesting thing is I'm old enough to remember the 08, 09 hit in the financial market and everything that changed with that. And that's when I went into the grocery space. And I have never looked back. Our first grocery customer was Whole Foods. And the only reason I think I got in there, there was some divine intervention for sure. 
but um, I was on the aisles of Whole Foods and I heard these two women talking to each other, one asking her friend, can you read the ingredients on this? I forgot my glasses. I'm like, hey, been there. So the lady was reading what it was and she came across an ingredient and the, and the other woman said, oh, I can't use that. My doctor says no alcohol. So I'm listening to this and I said, I said, I hate to interrupt, but that type of alcohol is not the alcohol your doctor is talking about. Um, that, that type of alcohol is a derivative of a fat and it's actually very moisturizing on the skin, blah, blah, blah. She bought it left, but there was a buyer from whole foods there in that aisle, listening to that whole thing. Wow. And so she's like, well, you know, a lot. And wow. that person who now is global whole foods, but, but back then was just a store level person brought the first products I ever made into whole foods. But for the most part, we have embraced grocery, whereas a lot of brands, they get too snooty for themselves. Right. And how I looked at it from the beginning was, and it's probably because of how I grew up, but a lot of times you can slip a little something for yourself into the grocery cart that's just that no one will know about because right. you were just at HEB. Right. Or you were just at Kroger. You know, it doesn't, you know, no one will know. Yeah. Whereas if I go to Ulta or Sephora, guess what? That's showing up on the credit card. And, right. Right. and, and, and I'm not saying that my husband looks, but he could. Yeah. And, you know, and, and why, why not? So I really kind of embraced that whole channel of distribution. Yes. And almost everything we make now is uh, priced in that way. Um, and really kind of has that, the mentality of if I'm walking by and I smell this, I can put this in my cart. It's not going to break anyone's bank. We want to keep everything affordable for everybody. We really do. That, that is my number one, uh, goal of the company. And that's, yeah. it causes the most friction, honestly. Well, and, but, you know, to your point, to be able to provide something that is healthy, it's luxurious, it's enjoyable. And who doesn't want to add a little bit of that mentality when we're going through the grocery store, buying the necessities that we right. have for ourselves and our families, and then add a little something that, you know, it, it might be $10, $15 or, you know, it, it's not going to break the bank. As you said, it's not going right. to be a red flag. And, and it gives somebody something that's going to lift their spirits, right. And help take care of their body. I, I want to highlight, I want to highlight something. I just did a workshop on this with business owners and we were talking about the differences between successful people and unsuccessful people. And we all have different definitions of what success is. Um, but I want to go back to the beginning of your story when you were standing in the grocery aisle and you heard these women talking and you were fearless from the aspect of you spoke up. Had you not spoken up and shared your wisdom that you were grounded in, you would have never had that opportunity because the buyer wouldn't have heard you. Right. And I just think it's really important that we highlight that is how you've built your company. That is how you've built your life. And it is by being fearless and not being afraid to speak up. Um, regardless of what the scenario was, right? Those women could have been like, stop talking to us or, you know. You know <laughs> exactly, <response>. back up. <laughs> they were grateful and you helped them buy the product. So I'm sure they they really enjoyed the conversation. But when you decided to speak up, you didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but you did it 100%, anyway. Right. I, I think a lot of people in, in general um, are, uh, are afraid of the ask. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, not only how do I ask for help, how do I ask for the order? How do I ask for a price? Um, how do I ask for somebody's name? It, it goes, it's even more simple than that. It's how do I ask my husband to help me with the trash? Or how do I get my child to um, pick up his room? You know, it, it's so much more basic than the big picture of a business. You have to decide for yourself what's important and what brings you value then how, that value you can give to somebody else and that value isn't necessarily a piece of advice on business it could be but that value could be you know what girl i know that you're you haven't been feeling well this week let me go to the grocery store for you that's value right it's it's not it's recognizing how you can provide value to somebody else and right. ultimately that's some, that somebody else will fill you 
because you felt good that you helped someone, even though sometimes the outcome could be negative. So in the case where you talked about the ladies in the aisle, they could have easily been like, hey, mind your own business. I'd be like, oh, pardon me. You don't want to allow the roadblocks of life to limit who you can be. Yes. Because the one thing I have found about people in general, especially uh, women to some degree, is they can be very jealous and very petty. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide as a human being, are you going to be jealous and petty or are you going to be graceful, humble? Are you going to do what you can for people so that if and when you ever need something, you've got a, you've got a Rolodex and a network of people who will help you because you never ask for anything. Right. You're just there and you show up. Right. And I think, you know, the, the, the power of the ask is important, but then also don't be afraid to fail. My yeah. goodness, people are so afraid of failing. And I can tell you, I've had nothing but failure, but all of that made me stronger. And yes. that's, that's what you want to show the world is like, look, yeah, I fell down. It's fine. I lost my butt on this deal or I lost money on that. It's okay. Yes. I always say you can make more money. Everyone says, oh, I can't make enough money. You can always make more money. But the one thing you can't get back is your time. Yes. So be careful with it. You know, spend it with people who, who fill you. Yes. Don't suck life out of you. You know, because yes. that time, once it's squandered, is squandered. God gave us 24 hours. That's it. I pray for 25 every day. Never happens. And it's, uh, it's 24. It, it, I mean, maybe if we all pray together for 25, but you know what I'm saying? It's that yes. time. You're never going to get that back. And, and I love that because it also makes me think of the time that we all can spend worrying about what other people think and <laughs> if we should or shouldn't do something. That also is a use of our time, right? And, and nowhere productive. So um, I, no, I, I love that piece of advice. And, you know, just... Share with us a little bit. I know that you have overcome challenges and you have had hard times like everyone. Um, you in particular, I know from being a friend, share with us just some of the challenges you've had to overcome and how did you really dig deep and find the inner grit to do so? You know, I've had a lot of uh, kind of personal and in business challenges for sure. And sometimes you know, they say, you know, life is the balance. And, and I'm, I'm not sure that that's true. I think life and work and everything is more of an integration. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, things pull you in a direction that you weren't expecting. Um, it, it could be a death of a child, it could be your car broke down, it could be, oh, my God, you just lost your biggest customer. Mm -hmm. There are many things it could be, oh, hello, we're in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that can happen. I think you have to decide you know, quickly, how you are going to respond. And I'm not going to lie and say, Oh, my goodness, I wake up every day. And I'm so excited about life. And this is so wonderful. And, and it's all rainbows and butterflies and flowers. You know what, that's not true. But what I do say is, I woke up today. I have an opportunity to be a light for the Lord today. I have the opportunity to do something good today. And that doesn't always happen. But that's what I start the day with. Yeah. And I will tell you that, um, you know, that inner grit, I've been kind of in a funk the last couple of uh, weeks about a, a, a business uh, relationship that hasn't panned out the way that I, it had been for a decade. And I've been really kind of bummed out about it. And then on last Friday, I just said, you know what, this is ridiculous. Number one, there's other customers. Number two, I can figure this out. And so what I did was I, <laughs> I was unhappy with the company's PowerPoint presentation. So I said, I'm going to take some PowerPoint classes. So I went online and I, you know, went to all the consulting things. And it's like, yeah. okay, I, I learned something new. And once I learned something new, I was so jazzed. It's like, I can't wait to get all this stuff done. You know, so here I was working on Saturday, which, you know, I should have been had my day off. But, you know, you, you, you take the time and you, you learn something new to get you out of your funk. And then you realize, you know what? I'm not dumb. I can figure this out. Maybe my channel of distribution looks different. Maybe yeah. I'm going to sell more to another area. Who knows? But one, one of the things I do know is that I will figure it out. And yes. I will get in touch with other people 
who sharpen me. People yeah. like Haley Garcia, people like, you know, Sakina Davis, Janine Jones, all my friends, yeah. um, Cindy Higgins, you know, all these people who I can reach out to. And I say, God, I just need some sharpening right now. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in the Bible, it says as, as iron sharpens iron, so does man sharpen man. We are called not to a life of me. We are called to a life of us. Yes. And when we are together, helping each other, sharpening each other, you feel so good. And then you can go in and kick butt in whatever area it is. It could be something as simple as a PowerPoint. And it's so funny because here I am I'm running a national company. Um, we have three brands and it's like, and, and all I say, I learned PowerPoint today. <laughs> I mean, but it's, it can be, it can be that simple if yeah. you want it to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, thank you for sharing that. And you know, what I heard you say over and over again, as you shared those different examples, you take action, whether it's okay. learning something new, whether it's seeking out your friends or a mentor or right, you take action. And I think that is one of the biggest, in my opinion, it's the biggest difference between people that are successful or unsuccessful, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever that whatever that definition may be. But when we take action, instead of sitting back and being a victim, right? We right. all, every single person can have something going on in life or business where we can sit back and, and land ourselves in the victim mentality versus what you shared. And I know you are the definition of is taking action and learning something new or being around others that build you up mm -hmm. or simply just, you know, if it's the, the action of getting yourself out of bed today and walking outside and looking up at the sky and, and saying a prayer of gratitude, you take action. And I think it's, it's really the definition of life, right? Well, you, we all have choices. Do you want to, you know, sit on the couch and curl in a ball? Hey, I have days when I want to do that. There are days when I say, you know what, I'm done with all of this. I'm putting in my application at either Starbucks, HEB, Whole Foods, and I'm just going to work. And I'm going to go home and that's it. I know. And, we do and the bar, right? I, I like, mean, I will be the barista next to you on some I mean, doing up at 4 a.m. anyways. Thank you. So, I mean, there are days and I say, worst case scenario for me, none of this works. My body works. My yep. mouth works. We all know that. Yeah. I can go out and get a job doing something. Yes. Um, so I, I think if that's the worst case scenario, you know what? That's not that bad. 100% agree. 100% agree. And we I'm going to be your assistant. I, well, I was going to say, we <laughs> have a really great time serving coffee together early in the morning. That would be a good thing. We would have the highest grossing Starbucks ever. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. The line would be wrapped around the building twice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, you know, you've been sharing your, your wisdom nuggets. I would love to hear if you have anything specific for women in business. Do you have any advice for us as women? Because we do have just, you know, men and women both have our sets of challenges. But for women specifically, with you and I on today, is there anything specifically you would give as advice to women that are either entrepreneurs or maybe they're in a, in a professional executive level in business? You know, one thing my dad said to me when I was very, very young, he said, there is no crime in being a woman. Embrace it. He said, but you know what? You're going to have to kill them with looks or stun them with looks and then kill them with brains, right? So you stun them with looks, you kill them with brains. So if you, you are, you know, have any kind of way how you look, that, that can jump at, at doesn't matter what it is, but yes. then it's your brains. Men never have to be told that they're smart or that, you know, they can do anything because that's just how they're, they're wired that way. That's how God made Adam. We are wired that way. So, but I would say, you know, it's okay to even start thinking kind of like a man, you know, what would so-and-so do if he were in this position, he wouldn't shriek back. He right. would come in and say, have a plan, execute the plan, be able to articulate your plan. Don't get emotional. Yes. Um, you know, all of those things, yes. but it is okay to be a woman and to look like a woman and to act like a woman and to speak like a woman. And you know what? To kick ass like a woman, yes. because there is nothing better than a, a in terms of a, a mentorship for all is a strong female boss. 
because normally we're more compassionate, we have more empathy, but also we can motivate people to get things done. Right. Because that motherly instinct in us, it's like, okay, you don't learn this way, you learn that way. Yes. But I'm going to teach you how to incorporate both of those things. Right. So I think that that's really the key. Embrace who you are. Yes. And, and stop trying to have some kind of mold, oh, by the way, that does not exist. There are no molds in the world. Correct. Such great advice. And, and I will add to it also, stop comparing yourself to everyone oh, else. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I did that, I would just be living in last year. Yes. Yes. So thank you for that, because I, I those are such great pieces of advice. Um, I know that you and I have, we've known each other for many years in the community, and we've worked alongside one another in a lot of our different nonprofits and just caring for the community. And you have always been such an inspiration to me, because no matter how hard you are working, no matter what projects you have going on, you always show up. And it, it is, it's such an inspiration to me and has been for so many years. Um, share with us just a little bit on how, how do you really serve the business community from, from the entrepreneurship mindset, but with that mission and that purpose within your heart that I see you giving so much to the community as a whole, how do you do that? And why do you do it? Well, I do it because I'm called, um, you know, we all, this place is bigger than us. And, um, you know, you have to have a heart to serve. I have a heart to serve. And I'm, I feel blessed by that. But also, you know, we all have the same 24 hours. And we talked about that. You have to decide what's important, you know, and if whether it's working with a nonprofit or showing up to help a friend or shoot a Habitat Humanities, you know, doing a house build next door, whatever it is, those are your choices. Because I find so many people waste the time they've been given, whether it's watching TV or they're on social media or whatever it has. You know, why on earth would you waste time when you can do something so valuable with it? And that value is different for every person. It could be, hey, I'm walking my neighbor's dog because I, I noticed that he was limping the other day and he can't really walk his dog. You know, whatever it happens to be, it doesn't have to be some grand thing like, Hey, I'm on the board of, you know, 400 charities. No, no one cares about that. Like sure. you said, show up and give it your all. All of us can do more. It's saying yes to the right things because I, I want to be involved in something that matters more than, you know, my cellulite or whatever. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. How, how would you say, before we run out of time, you, you said, say yes to the right things. How would you give advice to others on how to choose what are the right things for each of us? That is a great question. You know, I, I want to say yes to the things that make me a better person. I want to say yes to the invitations to the dinners where I'm going to learn something and not like learn about my financial plan. I'm talking about, you know, did you know that so-and-so loves birds? And oh my gosh, I didn't know we had those birds in the woodlands. You know, what? pick a thing. But something that's going to make you better, something that's going to expand your mind, something mm -hmm. that could all put you in a position to do something good for someone else. Mm -hmm. When we take our mind off of ourselves, it's shocking what can happen in terms of the fulfillment, the gratitude, your heart is full. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, but it takes, you have to be intentional with those thoughts. Yes. Um, you really do. So say yes to the things that make you better, you know, but it's also saying yes to the little kid down the street who needed help building their lemonade stand. I mean, it's things that are going to make you better and make your heart full. Those are the things you should be saying yes to. 100% agree. And, and I'm going to add to that and say, because the things that make us better are also when we are better for others. And then, and then it comes full circle, right? So I 100% agree with you. Such great advice. Um, Miss Deborah, tell us what is next for Deborah? What, that, is your, <laughs> what is on your 2023 goal board, vision board? What have you got in the future? Well, my, my future changes hour by hour, um, and that's okay. So really what, what's next for me is, um, and this is going to sound silly, it's what's next for me actually is happening right now. And that is to stay focused. Mm. Um, my goal 
for this, really for the next two years, is to truly only make products that are profitable for the company mm -hmm. and not just, oh, I have to have this because I have that, mm -hmm. um, which is a very big corporate mentality. It's no, what is going to make us profitable? Because I have 30 families, sometimes 35, that, that, make, that are counting on me for their paychecks to feed their families. So I need to make sure that everything we make, whether it's one or a million, it makes money. And uh, both my husband and Bob Milner would be so happy to hear me say that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's true. Yeah. And you can't do good. And I can't be philanthropic if I'm not making money. And all I want to do is to be able to, if someone calls and says, hey, can you do blah, blah, blah? I'm like, yes, I can. Here's your check. You know, so that for me right now, it's focus. I love it. I love it. Your winning strategy, what's important now is focus. So good. That's right. <laughs> so good. Tell everyone where they can find Infusia and how they can. Uh, I know I know you're in a long list of stores, but just give us a little bit of information on where can they find your amazing products other than my personal bathroom. Okay, oh, that's right. Um, so, of course, you can find us if you're in Texas, you can find us at Whole Foods and HEB. You can also find us at Natural Grocers, a lot of independent retailers. If you're outside of Texas, you can find us at a lot of Kroger's. Natural Grocers is also another big one. Um, but that's Infusia and Muscle Rehab. You also can find us online, of course, at infusia.com. And if you'd like to reach out to me directly, I love working with people and helping people and chatting with people. Um, you can reach me on LinkedIn, Deborah Myers. Thank you so much, my dear friend. I Thank love you. every bit of time that I get with you. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. And and be a part of this community together. So thank you for all you do and for coming on early. I know your time is so valuable. So have an amazing day. And for everyone who joined us today, thank you for getting up early with Wake Up With. Yes. Um, our next show will be Tuesday, September 20th. And as a reminder, uh, we're on the first and third Tuesdays at 7.30 a.m. sharp for Rise, Shine, and Live Aligned. And I hope you have an amazing day.